Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video. Today we are taking this desktop computer and we're gonna have a go at turning this into a Windows XP retro gaming PC. This computer is built by CDM, they are an Australian company and they sell to large businesses and government agencies. So let's have a quick look at the front of the unit. We've got headphone outputs, microphone input, there are four USB 2.0 ports and it has a Firewire port as well. And on the right hand side of the front of the unit we've got two LEDs. One is for the hard drive access and one is for power. And then we've got two buttons here, one for reset and one to power the unit on and off. And here we are at the back of the unit. We've got VGA, DVI, six USB 2.0 ports, another Firewire port, Gigabit Ethernet and the audio ports. And we have four slots for interface cards. We will have a closer look at that when we open the unit. And here we've got the power supply with an on-off switch. Now most of these machines are a little bit boring. They're meant for office type applications and not for gaming. However, with a few key upgrades, we should be able to turn this into a quite capable Windows XP retro gaming machine. So what we're gonna do next is grab a monitor, turn it on and have a look if we can find out what is actually inside. So the machine turned on fine. It's got Windows 7 Professional pre-installed. And one advantage of getting these uh, OEM machines or these older business machines is that you usually get a professional license like Windows 7 Pro or Vista Pro. And the Pro license includes the right to downgrade to Windows XP. So we don't need to worry about licensing. Here we are in the BIOS and this gives us a few clues of what is inside of this machine. The top, the BIOS version, I can tell that this is an Intel motherboard. The processor is a Core 2 Duo, the E7200, which is an all right processor for Windows XP. It runs at 2.53 gigahertz. In terms of RAM, we've got two sticks of 512 megabytes for a total of one megabyte. So I do recommend that we're gonna upgrade um, the RAM on this machine. Here we get a clue about the hard drive. It is a Western Digital. Very likely it's an 80 gigabyte uh, SATA hard drive. We will have a look at storage options as well, especially if you're going for an SSD drive. With Windows XP, you have to be a little bit careful. So all we need to do is unscrew these four case screws and then we should be able to have a look inside. So that's always nice to see on the inside of the case cover. It's got a diagram that tells us everything about the motherboard, especially the front panel connector. That's always a bit of a pain if you don't have the documentation. So this is what the machine looks like with the cover removed. We've got the power supply here. There's a hard drive. It is indeed an 80 gigabyte hard drive from Western Digital. There's a cooling fan over here. We've got a couple of slots, one PCI, the other ones are PCI Express, and here's the processor with the cooling solution. So what we're gonna do next is remove the front panel. So there are some tabs here, we just gotta uh, loosen them up a little bit, and then that should come off quite easily. And then we've got these two latches here, which allows us to lift um, open this part here and that should also come away. This is like some kind of a cooling duct and that gives us access to the computer. So now let's take a few minutes time to talk about possible upgrade options. We've got the processor, we've got the RAM, the storage and the video card. The first thing I would upgrade is the video card. Now this is a, a small form factor machine with low profile slots, so you need to get a low profile video card. And there are lots of options. Going for Windows XP, I actually don't have too many low profile video cards. The card we're gonna use in this project is a NVIDIA GT630. I believe that is uh, quite a weak card. Hopefully it'll be enough. Ideally for Windows XP, something like a 750 or 750 Ti would be uh, recommended. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, such a card yet. I'm looking on eBay, but the prices are still fairly high, especially for the low profile stuff. So the GT630 will have to do for this video. Next up is the RAM. One gigabyte is not really cutting it for gaming, even under Windows XP. So because RAM is cheap and this machine uses DDR2 memory, I'm gonna go with two two gigabyte uh, sticks of RAM for a total of four gigabytes in dual channel configuration. 
For the processor, there are lots of upgrade options. Here in Australia, looking on eBay, it seems for around $20 you can get two options. You can get the Core 2 Duo E8600, this is the top dual core processor, or if you fancy going with a quad core, check out the Q9400. Now, Windows XP, I believe you're better off with a faster dual core. Now the E7200 I think is just fine for Windows XP, so we're gonna uh, stick with this processor for the time being. Maybe in another video we're gonna upgrade this machine and see if we can squeeze out some more performance, but especially considering we're using a fairly entry-level uh, GeForce GT630, I think the E7200 processor will, be, uh, will do just fine. So in terms of storage, the built-in 80GB SATA hard drive is not too bad, but there are lots of uh, better options. You can go for a, a more modern uh, model with higher capacity and they usually are a lot faster. Now, you could go with an SSD, a solid state drive, but Windows XP doesn't, doesn't support it, especially the trim function. So you might be running into issues with wearing the drive out. And um, yeah, that just might be causing some issues. However, if you want, SSD-like performance, you could go with an SSHD, which is a solid-state hybrid drive. That's basically a traditional platter drive, but it's got an 8 gig uh, SSD portion uh, built in, which will learn what kind of uh, software you're running most frequently and will cache that information. For this project, the 80 gigabyte SATA hard drive will do just fine. We're just going to install a few games and benchmarks, but if I would use this machine uh, long term or permanently, I would definitely replace it, at least for a faster SATA hard drive. So that's good to go. We're going to put it all together and then install Windows XP. I've done a few things off camera. One was just uh, reapplying the thermal paste on the CPU cooler. And the other thing was just using an air blower to get rid of all the dust. So here we can see the installation of Windows XP. I just used a USB optical drive and it worked without any issues, just partitioning and formatting the hard drive. Next up came the drivers, the chipset drivers, sound drivers and also drivers for the video cards. Of course, I installed a couple of benchmarks and games. Let's have a look at some benchmark results first. We've got 3D Mark 2001, we're getting 33,793. In 3D Mark 03, we're getting 20,631. In 05, we're getting 14,164. And in 06, we're getting 7,644. I also ran Aquamark 3, which gives us a result of 79,973. So let's have a look at a couple of games. First we've got Far Cry, this is one of my favorite and it only runs under Windows XP with the ultra uh, water settings, the land mass reflections that don't show up on the modern operating systems. Um, no one has been able to figure that out, uh, very interesting. And yeah, before you know it, I was already in the fourth level. So this is one addictive game and performance. Uh, even outdoors uh, with the water and everything, the performance does go down a little bit. Uh, it does dip it, uh, below 40 FPS, but indoors and most of the time, this is uh, extremely playable. So this is all details maxed out, running at 1440 by 1080. The next game I had a look at was Painkiller, a really fast-paced uh, FPS shooter. Runs extremely well, uh, we're getting over 100 FPS most of the time. I don't think it ever dipped under 60 FPS, so that game runs extremely smooth on this machine. I had a quick go at Prince of Persia, The Two Thrones. Didn't really enjoy the controls, it was very clunky. Um, it does run quite well above 60 FPS most of the time, but I didn't spend too much time with this. Um, it kept referring to controller, uh, to a controller and I'm playing on a PC, so it uh, seems like a, a rushed console port. Halo, now that's a real classic, it runs very smooth once again at 1440 by 1080 in the 4 by 3 aspect ratio, we're getting uh, uh, really high FPS, uh, up to 120 or 150 FPS, so this is silky smooth and yeah, still looks very good, very colorful, lots of special effects, so Halo runs really well on this machine. The next game we have is Fear. Now when that game came out, uh, gorgeous graphics and also quite uh, tough to run, you needed a very high-end machine back in the day. So. Uh, once again, everything is maxed out, however, I did not turn on the soft shadows because they can really 
uh, affect performance. So most of the time this game runs smooth, but uh, any special effects or explosions or lots of smoke going on, then the FPS uh, does drop down a little bit. And if you look at the uh, overlay on the top left, we can see that the video card is basically maxed out. So for this game, uh, my recommendation would be going with a slightly faster video card. Return to Castle Wolfenstein with the latest patch that adds 4K support and all sorts of other nifty things. I've removed the 90 FPS limit so it runs uncapped at full HD, all details maxed out. Make sure you turn on dynamic lighting, it looks absolutely gorgeous. And that game just flies, we're getting uh, between anywhere 100 to 200 FPS, so uh, very smooth on this machine. Another game we're looking at is Insane, a really interesting racing game and that once again runs really smooth, uh, everything is maxed out. Like with all the other games, we're getting 100 FPS uh, right about there for most of the time and it runs really well. I had uh, Initially I had some graphics glitches but there was an option in the game to turn on uh, TNL support for the video driver and that fixed it after that everything worked. But does it run Crisis? So here we have Crisis running at 1080p, all details set to high, but I turned motion blur off because I'm, I can't stand that. And we're getting around 10 to 15 FPS. So this is a game, this is the most demanding game we've tried so far, and the GT630 is clearly struggling. Uh, makes it hard to hit anything, to be honest. So uh, on this system, probably better off playing it at 720p uh, and or lowering some of the graphical details, but if you want to play it at uh, full HD with all the details then you, you really need a better uh, video card, something like a 750 Ti for example. So we had a good look at this machine, had a look inside, we talked about upgrade options, we had a look at some benchmarks and also uh, gaming performance and I must say I was positively surprised with the GT630. I did a bit of research and there's so much negativity for these uh, bottom low-end GPUs and I understand most of the um, concerns that basically they are underpowered for anything modern but for Windows XP retro gaming these cards could become very interesting especially if you picking up these uh, low profile small form factor OEM machines and you just need a, a basic GPU to upgrade. Pretty much all the games ran fine, apart from Crisis, uh, but look, that's normal, that game is challenging for uh, any machine out there. And all the details were maxed out, so there is improvement. Uh, you can just lower the details a little bit, play at 720 or uh, even a lower resolution like uh, 1024 by 768, and you should get even better performance out of this system. So the idea was to show you that you can pick up one of these cheap OEM machines and just by thinking a little bit about the components and making some uh, key upgrades, you can uh, build yourself a really awesome budget, maybe free uh, retro gaming PC. Now, let me know what you think about this project. Um, I might have an opportunity to get a few more of these machines, maybe doing something more modern, uh, Windows 10 with a... Uh, GeForce 1030 or 1050 Ti projects around that. Uh, so let me know what you guys want to see and any questions about this machine just um, drop them down below in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. But that's it for this video. So this was uh, something new uh, for this channel. I certainly enjoyed it and some of the games um, yeah, I spent actually I spent too much time um, playing them, but that was good. I don't play too many games lately, so it was fun playing a bit of Far Cry and Fear once again. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I shall see you soon with another video.